Greetings, greetings, market rebels. Welcome to this week's macro measure video combined with sector situation. It is Friday, September 27th. It's a little bit in front of 3.30. I think it's just after 3.15 here on the East Coast. And we are about to get into it. It's been a pretty busy week. I think overall, folks that were trading on the services probably had a pretty good week, which is always our goal. Here's our trusty disclaimer. And here is our trusty intellectual property rights notice. And then we're going to go directly into the selective review. So let me see if I can get the laser pointer going. I'm just never, never been any good at these things. Uh, anyway, so just for folks that are newer, we're just trying to keep things uh, nuts and bolts, right? Nothing super complicated, just basic tools and techniques. That doesn't even seem like the right slide to me. I'm pretty sure I made a modification on that, but oh well. Uh, let's make sure the rest of this is. No, you know what? We're getting. No, we might. We this might be right. I don't know why I didn't keep some of my changes. My bad. Anyway, I'm at a loss. I'll have to check into it later. Anyway, um, we're just trying to mainly identify the market environment we're operating within. We try to arrive at a, um, a an an asterisk there, which is really just your. Uh, news neutral, most likely scenario, because news is really, of course, that unexpected news is by definition not possible to, to know about in advance, um, unless you're on the inside, maybe. Anyway, uh, we try to highlight the bullish and bearish risks, of which there can be both. And then what we always suggest with me at the helm is to go to 2x on your replay speed and try to review just a few of last week's key points. So I'll let everyone read those, uh, factoring in the long-term trend uh, and the short-term robotness. We thought that reckoning time was upon us because we are getting really close to the back. We were getting into the back half or back, very back end of September into October, which in the presidential election cycle year is typically not very good. Uh, that was clearly right turned on its ears to a degree this week in some places. Not really as strongly as you would think, though, given the performance of some stocks. But we were really looking for wait until you see the whites of their eyes and then go with it. Be op be opportunistic, and that didn't take long to materialize. It was just um, not easy, right? Because they generally traded things up, but they worked things up mainly in the mornings and then worked them down. Uh, pretty consistently throughout the week. So it was not an easy, I don't think, week to trade despite some great moves in some places. And uh, that's that's all she wrote, I guess, on that for now. We were waiting for um, the NVIDIA SMH to really put it together. We thought that uh, it was potentially ready to do that. It was during the apex of a triangle, seemed ready to do that. Uh, we thought that uh, no, that some kind of news would be required to derail those plans. Um, and we said if the market itself became derailed without major news, that would be even worse because that means someone knows something and it's or some some folks know some things. It's not widespread knowledge and they're selling the daylights out of things. And then you usually find out why a little bit later. But anyway, in retrospect, um, it really wasn't a decisive win for the Bulls. I mean, they could put a last minute scamper together as they often do, but uh, the MU data really played into their hands, the MU reaction, I should say, and uh, on EPS and et cetera. And the data generally worked in their favor. But as of right now, we're only up, we're up shy of a, a, a full percent, right? So. Uh, that in includes, right, that nice burst in SMH, nice burst in NVIDIA. Um, and, and really, the big three major ETFs were up less than 1%. But the IWM, when I checked it a little while ago, was down. And the VIX is nearly unchanged. So that's a little something there I'm going to note or comment on. Um, and frankly, right, the problem really became the retreat of NVIDIA and SMH uh, as the week concluded. So a lot of that really big push that went into overdrive on Thursday was reversed pretty hard on Thursday and on Friday. 
it's not the end of the world. It's just if you're a bull and it's been we have an incoming uptrend and it's been in place for some time. And as I've said many times on these videos, I'd prefer to trade as a bull. I think it's a lot easier than trading as a bear, generally speaking. Um, anyway, with that being with that being said, uh, we didn't really get that strong stick, if you will, of the landing at the end of the week. We got really pretty sig significant retreat. And now that's left us where many leading sectors are now effectively overbought, even if they're not technically overbought by a certain percentage or whatnot and on RSI, but they're very close. And defensive names though fell at the same fell off at the same time. So again, it's sort of a little bit like last week where everything sort of <clears throat> worked out, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's not that impressive yet. It's really not where you'd say, well, they came in for these defensive names. That must be that must mean the market's starting to sense that it should shift to a more defensive posture. There could be a good reason for that. I didn't really see that too much when reviewing the sectors, which I think we'll see. Um, so we did talk about NVIDIA. We did talk about the MSTR. And uh, as a couple of special notes last week, we don't always talk about stocks, but we did have to note that because we felt like the UOA was very, very strong in NVIDIA. And we also had some interesting things developing, we thought, related to crypto-related names on the charts. And MSTR had some really interesting paper, I thought, that we had an idea on. So fortunately, <clears throat> I think folks were excuse me, rewarded to uh, keep their eyes on those. That's always good when you when you uh, focus on something that doesn't have to happen that particular week is what I'm getting at. It might never happen, but it certainly doesn't have to happen that week. So at least those two were good areas of focus for us for this week. And I'd say that MSTR was really the far more impressive stock. Um, maybe because now NVIDIA is becoming overwatched. You know, I don't know, or it just it's maybe the true nature of things right now that uh, NVIDIA just needs to go through more of a consolidation. We'll have to see on that one. But um, MSTR was definitely a, a really strong performer. You really can't complain about the opportunity that it offered this week. XAU, we we've been talking about, well, we've been, we don't really table pound, but we've been talking about this for such a long time. And I'm sure other people have as well that follow you know that space it's just been tracing out a pattern that is has fired it looks a lot like a cup and handle we talked about that still has big time potential if you ask me and i'd say that um you know it had a decent week but it kind of ended on poor note you know we did mention that also recently but that's that's been doing very well i think I think someone published something where gold is up as much, if not more, on the year than the S&P. Not something you see all the time. So that's kind of interesting. But yeah, it was a nice run that, as of last look, was finishing on a rather poor or sour note. So now I'm going to move into this week, and I'm going to leave it up there, and everyone can pause and then screenshot it, maybe put it on another screen or print it out so they can follow along to all the gobbledygook that I'm going to go through this week, but I don't think this will be too long for us. I think this video actually will be on the shorter side because I don't want to belabor the point that it's not easy right now. And as I said last week, I think I said this last week, when we have a market that I find tough to read, not that I'm, you know, not that I'm infallible or anything like that. I'm just saying that over the course of all the years of doing this stuff, Usually when I feel that way, usually means you were right at first because I was just like everyone else who wanted to always have a trade on or trades on. I would try to insist on coming up with an opinion that was strong so I could make money. But what that did was lose me money because I was forcing it when it wasn't there. And of course, that was many, many, many years ago. I, well, many decades ago, unfortunately, at this point. Uh, and I finally learned my lesson after hopefully not too long on it somewhere after I'd gotten into things and said, look, you don't have to do this. Like that's, that is one of your advantages as an individual trader. You're no longer making markets. You don't have to make markets. 
you select the time, place, degree, et cetera, that you want to be involved with something, that's really the proactive approach, not the reactive approach I was as a market maker or a desk trader. And so it was uh, a lot more freeing that way, right? When you only, you should only really step in at opportune times. But even though you kind of know all that going in, I think when you get so deep into something, you kind of lose your perspective and you need to go through it and like sort of make it all work again. Um, so let's get into this really quickly. Uh, I'll just note that I think at this point, I've got to say that my spidey sense is tingling. It's been a long time since I said this. Um, I've been warning about things because I always try to do that to, so folks do not sleep on risks that are building. You just never know exactly when they're going to impact with uh, you know high certainty. So, But I, I really do feel like the spidey sense is starting up. This recent action feels a little hollow to me. Now, I've felt this way before, and I can't say that the spidey sense you know, bats a thousand, but usually there's a good reason when the spidey sense starts to act up. It usually bears out to some degree. Um, having said that, right, I really can't put my, my hand or finger on exactly what the problem is. Uh, there's something wrong with this market, I think. I could be wrong, but I think that's the case. Um, and it could blow over, right? You know, I, I could be seeing something that isn't there. So I don't want anyone that, that thinks I do a good job to uh, become overly bearish too soon. That's also very problematic, you know, which is why I'm not really a table pounder because I believe that more than anything, you know, the, you need to be respectful of risks in both directions and be a very nimble trader that's just willing to go with the flow when you're operating in the short run. I think that's the best approach. I've been clear on that since, you know, day one, um, once I feel, finally feel like I figured some things out. And uh, well, since I've made these videos or been part of Market Rebellion, I think I've made that clear many times. So I doubt I'm going to change my mind on that, but you never know. It's just been that way for a long time. And uh, I think that's really, honestly, the that people look for the holy grail. And I'm not saying that research and number crunching isn't worth your time. I certainly think it is. And I still love doing it myself when I have the opportunity to, and I've always liked that. But um, more so than anything, it's just the prevailing wind and being willing to go with it. And then if that shifts quickly, shift with it. If you're willing to do that, you have a, you can trade both in both directions. You have a ton of opportunity really in, in most markets um one way or the other anyway i would say if i am right for some reason and the next say few months are potentially very volatile one thing that you can learn if you don't know anything is the caller strategy and if you're part of our services get in there with whomever and ask them to help you out with that so that you understand that you can do that across short term intermediate term long term you can do it for uh, even. You can do it for a credit. You can do it for a debit. You can do it however you want to. You can even break it up and collar things in a more aggressive way. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with a collar, but if you do it th the traditional way, you can look for a way to really protect yourself against the downside in a big way. Uh, limit your upside as part of the deal, but not really have to put too much money out, if any at all. And that's exciting if you're learning, I think. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I would learn that and much more only because knowing how to play defense if stuff hits the fan is just huge. It's just huge. You don't have to sit there and take a beating. Uh, that's what a lot of people do that are unaware that they, they oh no, this all fell apart on me and they kind of deer in the headlights that you don't want to be that person. You want to understand that, no, I can look, I'm not, I don't believe what's happening here. It doesn't, doesn't ring true to me, but I'm just going to collar things for now and see where it shakes out. There's no shame in that. <laughs> so there's no reason really not to learn it. Anyway, I'm going to show that this legacy trend line really has been very popular over the couple, last couple of weeks. So that's another reason to leave some of those up there at time at times. The market did scoff at the late September presidential election cycle seasonality, but at the same time, did, I'm asking this question, did it pull a Steve Ovet? 
right? He was, I believe, a runner. I think he was from the UK. I think it might. He, he was. I think he was a British runner. Uh, and way back in the eighties, I think he started celebrating too soon when he thought he had uh, a longer distance race won. And somebody, somebody, I, I'm not sure if it was the Olympics or whatever it was, but somebody ran right past him at the very end, and he, I think, he finished in second place. But that's the thing, like the way that I saw a lot of bulls. Uh, talking, you know, online, so to speak, uh, they really do seem to be celebrating, right, that they made it through September, there's been this push, and uh, everything's wonderful, and the market seems to be convert confirming all their, all of their, uh, their wildest bullish dreams. So I'm just going to mention that um, I wouldn't be in that camp, you know, I'm still not a big believer in that. Anyway, the AAII survey, CNN, they're both elevated, uh, the seasonality calendar got thrown out the window in, you know, I would say in the last second half of, of September for the most part. Um, but now I'm still asking, right, is it back on? And I still feel, as I alluded to, that that rolling complacency is is still in place. And I don't think you can see it that easily in the chart. So I'm running that one again. I just don't. And that's kind of where the spidey sense comes in. Um, the sec sectors and market breadth, there's nothing really wrong, but off question mark. I do think something's off. I've already said it. And I, I think it has to do with the way the market's been trading of late. And I don't know. You could say, well, it's been doing this for decades. Well, we'll talk about that. So let's get into that. Um, but I do kind of feel like I'm seeing some signs of deceptive, even by gang standards, which are high. I do feel like there's some deceptive distribution that's been happening lately. And um, I do feel like there's, an issue with these mega caps and it could just be the rotation every that's kind of the uh storybook uh scenario that a lot of these online bulls seem to think you know they've they've got it that they've got everything uh within their uh, grasp but i'm not so sure about that you know I'm, i don't have the data to say any, say anything about that but i do know that over the last few decades when the mega caps are roaring that's when the stock market is doing it, it's best typically. And when they're not, it, there's typically a problem. So we'll see. So on that note, I'm going to stop the share. We'll get right into the charts and we'll cover the rest of this as we wrap up. So let me just reposition a few things and I've got to undo a few things here. Let me move this over. I think I'm going to start out with these mega caps um, because I've already got it there and it takes a little time to build and that'll save us a little time. So there you have it. There's uh, there's screen four. And this is what I'm getting at. Let me try to pop this up a little bit here. And you can see this is really, I'll just be very clear on it. Or you can see really the eight stocks that I've got involved here uh, over here, right? These eight, the eight big dogs. Um, maybe uh, we could start considering adding a few more to it, but you can see that they're not, they didn't really get that far off of the high. We had uh, the high on this particular day was just under 215. So we're talking, you know, on a 2720 basket, we're talking about five measly points. So that's good enough in my, you know, in my book for a possible double top. And it's got this, you could say negative divergence here because the RSI reading, this is a simple thing. A lot of people like divergences, but you can see that this was a more powerful move, and this is just a little bit lacking in comparison. Uh, at the same time, right, um, you can notice that the volume here uh, sort of dries up a little bit as you get into this sort of area where folks really don't care to keep buying, buying, buying. We are dwindling a little bit. You can see the trend recently in volume is dwindling, dwindling, dwindling. So we have to then say, is this is this possible? And you all know me, I'm not, that have been with me for a while. I'm not saying it's definitely a double top. You need to go get a th your third mortgage out and buy puts. I'm What I'm saying is that's one scenario we have to consider, right? That's a fairly common scenario. So what does that mean for us? Give me a trend line, please. Think or some, there it goes. Okay, what does that mean for us? Well. If I try to draw an aggressive trend line, it could look something like that. There's a couple different ways to draw. You can really best, the, you know, I've I've found that the best way to do this is just with your best fit on your eye. And you, you just develop that if you're new. 
But that second one I drew would probably be the one that a lot of people would feel better about. But that's you're starting to fall below trend. And you might say, well, then, you know, it's, we're falling below this aggressive trend. Remember, it's counter trend. So it's a little harder, harder to trade, to say the least, than if it were uh, with the trend that we were taking out some some form of uh, support or resistance. Well, in this case, it would be resistance on the other way. But here's the former sort of little shelf that we were sitting on closing near. And that's right near this 10 day on here. Remember, this is artificial, but I'm just using it for, I think, you know, uh, illustrative purposes here to point out that this could, as a package, this could be in trouble. So if you fall below 2633.51 as of right now, just call it 2630, you then you start maybe inviting more selling, right? And this has really not been, not that it's a failure yet. I wouldn't call it a failure, but this really didn't have the, the real zoom behind it. It kind of worked its way up nicely, um, a, nice, a nice slope. There was nothing wrong with it but it really wasn't that out of helling like they did on the first leg up. That's not completely uh, uncommon, right? That happens a lot. So there's, again, nothing really wrong with it. But now you're getting to the critical point where do they back this up to the former high, which it kind of respected as it was trying to break out, by the way, and do they hold it there? That's probably just about where the 15 in red would come in, which is just below 2,600 right now. So just call it 2,600. So the 2,600-ish level on this whole package, to me, that starts to become a big deal. Below there, you've got the 20. That's also a pretty good thing to keep your eye on for the short run and intermediate term trading. So if you lose that, then you're inviting even bigger problems. So it's not a done deal that there's trouble. It's not even a done deal that on Monday, this thing will keep keep dropping. It's just that the potential's there. you know, And so... If they hold it above the 10, you know, that's a, that's one good reason to keep these short-term SMAs on your charts, even though, again, you hear me say often, I'm not the biggest fan of these types of things, but that, that you know, that's irrelevant. They can still be helpful in some ways. And that is when you support above the 10, a lot of people take that as a very strong, positive thing. Like, hey, this can't even, when it backs up, it doesn't even fall below the 10 day. That's very good. That's their kind of first line of defense, if you will. And so they people like to see that. So again, that's maybe a reason to keep them on your charts. But point is, right, this is looking like it's got this bigger picture problem. Maybe we can't fall asleep on that. We know what will happen if this whole package starts to have problems. Uh, no matter what they do, really, in the rest of the market, um, this having problems is just not a good thing for the market. So just keep that in mind. And um, I think this is one reason why I'm a little concerned, a little bit more concerned, but I'll give you the spidey sense right now. Why am I trotting out my old spidey sense, cheesy uh, little comment like that? The reason for it, this is because of the way this thing has been trading. Um, you might say that, well, what's wrong with it? It just made a new all-time high. And that's the thing. It's I'm not somebody who shows up and wants to pick a fight with a trend. I think a lot of folks that have been following us in our services for years know that I prefer not to do that, uh, greatly prefer not to do that, because I think it's so much harder to trade counter trend than it is to trade with the trend. I've seen more brilliant people get absolutely smoked by trying to trade against the trend. And I've seen more people that you just feel like God's got a, a, an extra eye on them to help them out. Let's leave it at that. Um, do super well on the long side, especially when the trend is up. And uh, that's it. I mean, it's, that ought to tell you, right, how I think hard it is. I haven't seen a lot of brilliant people that were just unabashedly long um, and had tremendous reasons for it. I, the general reason is stocks are going up, I'm long. And that there's nothing wrong. By the way, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's you'll get a great argument from people when stocks look like they should go down, um, the, you, the people will cite everything. Um, I don't blame those people. I have same some of the same problems and felt the same way they did uh, many many moons ago. And I get I get that whole thing. It's just that the trend that uh, you know is every trading book practically that's ever been written tries to make clear the trend is by far the most important factor. You know if you if you ask me. So, and I, I think, like I said, almost every book I've ever seen <laughs> says the same thing. 
And it's not because everyone's lazy and just writes the same thing would be my my way. But the trend line I'm, would be my way of explaining it. The trend line I'm talking about is this one. I'm going to highlight it in blue. I was going to highlight it in blue. Thinkorswim's really been killing me today. I had, a, I had to kind of sign off and sign back on at one point. Uh, it's so frustrating. But um, I'm transitioning away. It's that blue line. I hope you can see it now because it'll probably give me trouble all over again when I try to resize things. But that was a former line, right, that I had. I'm going to try to let me zoom in on three months. Maybe it'll maybe it'll give us a uh, – it's just hesitating on me, as you can see. Really frustrating. So let me just get three months so everyone can see this better. But that line is the one that we've been trading around. So if I, I'll drop down to a 10-minute chart so you can see this. But I just want everyone to see this if I can get the right perspective. Uh, let me just do, uh, boy, oh boy, it's really fighting with me. Okay, this might call for another, let's see if this one will work. I might have to pull this one over. Nope. What about, I think it's this one? No. Uh, this one? Nope. Jeez. Wow. Okay. I'm going to have to just, um, let me do this. Let me just turn this off. Boy, oh boy. I apologize, folks. Maybe this won't be a short video after all. It's supposed to be, but this, this thing's really slowing down. And I just rebooted uh, a little while ago. Let me do a 20 minute here. Um, and then go back to the 10 and hopefully I'll get better. I want better scaling. Oh, geez. Boy, this is torture. Really is torturing me right now. Well, I think you can see the line. I'm going to try to make it blue anyway. I'm sorry about the whole delay. Go, go back to white so you can see it better. But you can see that we've been, this has been observed, right, for basically the back half of, I think it's been observed strongly for the back half of September. Uh, with only, I guess, one trading day remaining. It's just been right around it, under it, you know, trading near it. It's been very, very sort of bisectional of the action. And I find that interesting for the reason that this, right, we probably should have, with everything that's been supposedly going right, um, this is not a very sharply sloped uh, line. It is just not a sharply upsloping line. And so even the, this is sort of that, what we talked about, I think a few weeks ago, is kind of like, is it stop buying on news? We were calling it, do you get a sell on news reaction? Or is it just stop buying aggressively on news? So now that people are going into that sort of, well, I don't know, you know, I wasn't, I was willing to scoop in here, but now that I'm getting this close to the election and there's uncertainty about the election, and there's other issues associated with it. Maybe I'm not as going to, even though I'm getting all the news I craved and, you know, I, I, every, every report's being spun so positively and, and all this and the treasury's doing its best to keep the liquidity pump going and they're going to keep priming it and try to get a, a really strong third quarter GDP estimate. Of course, uh, anyone would expect that from any administration, by the way. But this is all the stuff that's going on. Um, and so you've got this sort of spiders with this uh, sort of, you know, are we really that impressed? The last couple of weeks have not been that impressive. They really can't get away from this whole thing, despite really breaking out in theory. Now we've got to see, right, from this ascending triangle that we identified some time ago, do they pull it back to the top of that? And then maybe do we start to see people step in that are not so worried about the election? Or, right, do we kind of have this mini double double top happening right now? And we're sort of at an overbought state. And we're kind of due after this kind of extended run, just like we were due after this extended run, for a little breather, a.k.a. a pause, a.k.a. a pullback, whatever you want to call it, right? Something like a pause or a pullback, just to see right if we can convert this former resistance level near the highs to a support level right and of course think or some also changed it i can't wait until i switch <laughs> i can't wait until i switch to uh 
I want to switch so badly to uh, trading view completely away because this is just the more and more. I just have custom stuff that I can't get away from yet. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm thinking about this. I'm feel I feel like that's my most favored scenario or most likely scenario is that we are due for a little bit of a pullback. And I would just want to note that despite all the wondrous stuff, right? Here is last Friday, you're at 568 and a quarter, right? Now you're up about three points from there, but that's just about half a percent. So I don't want to read too much into this sort of late in the week fizzle that we've seen, but we have seen a late in the week fizzle. And a lot of this upside stuff uh, we've seen has been engineered overnight, and then they spend all day, all day, really absorbing the sell-off in the morning, and then trying to march it back up somewhat in the afternoon. So that's they're not really coming after shares during the normal session with gusto. And like I said a few minutes ago, that's been the case for a long time. But just another way that the market's trading that I don't think really bodes well. That's the spidey tingle type stuff that it's like, well, no one's really chasing these things during the day. In fact, they're sort of selling them once, even though the, the top is in for the day, because usually the top has been near the openings, you know, or they a couple of times they've goosed towards the close. But here you go. Last week, you know, you're only up about uh, you're only you're up less than 300 points after all is said and done because they sold into this thing today in the diamonds, right? So you're not even up one, per, you're not even up 1% in the diamonds. You're not up, you're up about, about slightly more than half a percent in the, uh, in the spiders. The Qs are only up again, marginally. I think they're up maybe a little bit less than 1%. Here's the prior Friday, you've closed at 482 ish. So, you know, you're up less than 1% there. And that's right with all this wonderful stuff happening in crypto and semis, um, so on and so forth. So definitely a lackluster finish. Is this a little bit of a foreshadowing for now that we're getting close to this election with the uncertainty that we have, do players pull back the reins? Um, we did note, of course, during this week, and I think last week that hedge funds have done their their usual and sold too soon. Maybe that's what's ha happened to uh, the market in terms of the latest hedge fund squeeze-a-thon, where you know they just come in, they get them in the mornings, they get them on news, they panic, they close, and then really from that point on, people are just using the rest of the session to sell after they've really put the screws to the hedge funds. But IWM is even down for the week. Right. So it's pretty hard to say, well, you're just in a lot of cases, we're just off of all time highs. Uh, so how bad can you really make it out to be? And I, I'm not that guy. I'm not trying to make it that way. But it's just not that impressive. And there's some little wrinkles to this whole thing that have me feeling a little less uh, sanguine about the whole situation. Right. Than I was last week was I was more neutral, but I'm still kind of neutral to slightly negative, mildly mildly negative on this market, not for some massive crash. The only thing that I think would cause something dramatic would be news developments, because I don't see any other problems that would really derail this thing. We've been saying that for quite some time, but here's IWM again, down on the week. You know, there's last Friday and you are down small on the week. So even though, right, rates are really coming off in theory and all this stuff that the arguments we keep hearing, uh, this hasn't really um, been able to get it going this week. It does have that potentially higher low above, right? Everything but the 10 day right there, right? So that is something to keep in mind. We talked about that, maybe trying to build a base camp for the run. So as I said earlier in the video, I would be nimble. I would be more about being nimble than anything. So my take right now, remember, it's always a snapshot in time. You don't know what the over the weekend news, Monday morning news will bring. And you've got to be ready to change your tune if that's the way the market wants to rock and roll. So that's what I would do. But as of right now, I, I feel like there's a concern here, but let's not get too far over our skis and say this thing is doomed. 
Um, it does potentially have the higher low in place to work with for a breakout, a breakout run. So if they sort of get it going, you know, on some news they can run with, um, let's say to start next week out, or maybe by Tuesday, we get a turnaround Tuesday, maybe after a week Monday uh, or a week or Monday, uh, then you know they would have something really to work with, not too not too far to run to have to get uh, to have to bust this thing out and go, and that would be a really welcome sign that the small caps are really going too. So all that would really do is would be to confirm what we see in I think the sector charts. And let me see if I can get those by the way, and I'll bring those over here now since we're on that subject. And the sector charts to me really don't reveal anything horrendous, but they'd also don't reveal anything great at the moment because notice that the recent leaders, as I have noted in on our slide, a lot of these are just near overbought and probably were overbought earlier today when they were near the highs, technically. For me, they're overbought now. I mean, they got, they're got they close enough now. I don't really care about 70. You know, I'm, I've made that clear many times, but you've got this whole column, right? And these have all been leaders lately. You know, they're all overbought. Discretionary, which came roaring back, is overbought. Okay, you've got, uh, let, let's see, what else do we have that was over here? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, communications over here is overbought, right? It got there. So these are good signs that these are working. No complaints. The defensive sectors uh, like XLV coming off, XLP, right? No one's interested. XTN. Definitely held its own, which is nice, right? To see transports not just turn tail and run like they have so many times. At least they haven't yet, right? So a lot of these things are not looking bad. XLF seemed to be able to um, stave off the wolves. It was looking like double toppy, mm, uh oh, right? But they the last couple of days they were able to move that back up a little bit. So that bears watching for a possible triangle consolidation that. In a bullish market, if we come up here, it starts to resolve itself there, and you have another leg of running there. And those can run nicely at times, as you can see right there, right there. And so it'd be nice if we could get some paper on them. But even without the paper, of course, I'd still trade them from a pure momentum perspective. And I would, uh, you know, I would just keep those on your list if you see them inching up towards breakout and the market is still buoyant. But, uh, Overall, right, what, what can you really take away from this? A lot of things tried to work, did work. A lot of things are just not ending ideally. They're not a disaster, though. They, in fact, like these look better, I think, than some other, uh, some of the major index ETFs in some ways. And they look a little bit better than the mega cap uh, basket in, in some ways, too, on balance. Okay, I can't say that about every one. A couple of things that are maybe worth noting, though, uh, even XLK made a new high, by the way, this week, right? Recent high, I don't mean all time, but recent high. So that was, of course, struggling. It's having the SMH, NVIDIA, sort of uh, Thursday, Friday blues again, though. So not that great there. But XL, XLRE, um, I've seen some really, I would say, rather concerning stuff that's always ignored for the longest time in popping up in home building, uh, in real estate, more stuff like that that just appears. Again, we can't cover it due to time, but that's looking concerning. So don't forget about that. Um, if I get the chance, I'm going to try to re-up an idea that we had in there. I keep doing that, figuring at some point there's going to be more of a sell-off. And it's uh, hasn't been over-traded or overwatched as a result, I don't think, really. But still, um, it hasn't really borne, you know, borne out anything for us by being prepared. It's been a, generally a waste of time because this thing's been so uh, relentless, right, in terms of not either not going down or, in fact, rising. But overall, it's really hard to look at this and say, yeah, things are really bleak. You know, I do see the reason for some of these leaders to have a little bit of a pullback. And that's part of not the spidey sense comment, but that's part of my slightly sort of, if you want to call it a bearish lean, but it's really more of a, a, a most likely scenario that it would incorporate more of a pause or pullback type of a type of a mentality uh, that I would come into, kind of come into the week expecting. If I come over to here, we should get some market breadth looks. And again, this is the one I flash all the time. 
it's really not that bad, right? Have we seen it better? Yeah, we have. We've seen it better. McClell but McClellan's summation is pinned towards the high. Remember, that's slower to react. McClellan oscillator, unfortunately, though, giving you a little concern, right? The way that it kind of generally trending down right now. The new highs, new lows. You're still seeing more new highs, which is good, but it's sort of still, I would say, weakening. We haven't really re-intensified and we're picking up again. But again, a lot of these other things like advanced decline, decline line, the cumulative advanced decline line average, um, the stocks above their 50, 100, 200, these are all looking quite good. Right. So this is why I, I say in the charts, you know, I don't see from this basic charting stuff that we tend to do in the video. I don't see anything that's glaring that says to me there's something right that's lurking with the market composite market behavior that says to me that this is so problematic that we're we're doomed. It just the market doesn't seem to think that way. Not that it's all knowing all the time, but um it's really hard to make the case from what we see here, what we see in the sectors, that yeah, we're that we're we're you know Damocles sword is is right above us and hardly anyone sees it. There could be fundamental reasons for that. There could be economic reasons, geopolitical reasons. You know all the rest, but I don't see that really shaping up in the charts. It doesn't really show me that in the sectors. The one thing I did mention that you know, and this is really just me talking off the top of my head, not that I can say anything uh, as to exactly why this would cause this, but it's really the DXY, right? My 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 little quip last week was, my little quip last week was that the DXY, you know, plunging below 100, could that start to rattle some people? And then all, you would normally say weaker dollar, that's good, right? That's good for stocks. But is it, does it get too weak that it becomes something that's problematic somewhere, right? Really problematic. And I don't know. I'm certainly not a dollar, you know, FX expert. I can't, I, I'm not an expert in anything, but I'm certainly not that. So that's all I can say is that does that start to worry people where this thing really starts to get chill lower in a bigger way? And I think that could start to rattle something. I don't know exactly what it would cause, what domino would fall first, and then where it goes from there. It, it, it's probably, it would be great if I could have like an expert guest on uh, to do something like that, talk about something like that for us. But unfortunately, that's not that's not the uh, the way we roll. Uh, we do what we can um, kind of at the end of the week around all the other responsibilities. So we're doing the best we can with with what we have. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, so I'm just a little concerned about that. Um, you know, the trend in yields, TNX, you know, we usually chart that. The trend in yields is, uh, you can see that. I mean, that's where it is. Now, you could say, well, it's overdone. Maybe there's going to be a reason why this comes ripping back. And it could be, right? It could be that inflation, you know, right away would be, the irony would be incredible that if the inflation numbers start to tick up right away, um, that would really be something. And if, if yields start to tick up with it, and that would really be something, but that would really start to probably scare people. Uh, they would think about, you know, the, 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 the uh, times in the past when what that's done to stocks, uh, at least in, initially. So, but overall, the trend remains down uh, there and it's not really getting off its back. It is something I think worth looking at one more time here, and that is the VIX. The VIX closed up on the week, if you can believe it, right? With all the celebrations that were going on and so on and so forth, I think, right, if we go back to the 20th there, you closed at 1615 and you closed at 1681. So I don't know if anyone else out there had the spidey sense, but I just have the spidey sense right now. And it's not as bad as it's been at other times, but it's definitely not on low. Uh, it's it's on a little bit above low in terms of the uh, the heat factor on the spidey sense. So there's something I just can't put my finger on right now that just doesn't feel very good to me about this market. And uh, I don't know. I hope I'm wrong. Let's put it that way. I hope that I've got I'm overdoing it that way. But uh, let me try to bring it back our 
slide and just make sure we are where we think we are. Let's see on this. That is not it. And that is also not it. What happened to my slide? Hmm. Geez, I'm having such trouble with my computer with all this stuff running. Let's go back to here. So we left off with, we covered uh, this stuff. Um, this is weird because, oh, it's dropped down too much. That's what it is. That's that's what the problem is. Okay. Uh, we had a breakout attempt. So I did cover the double top in the mega caps. Um, yeah, the conversion process. This is this is where you know I we talked about that if we can get some of these new highs that get the pullback and oh yeah I want to just talk about the one thing there I'm glad I put that little asterisk there so I think I showed this in a recent video this is this will be the second confirmation if we do pull back and hold man oh man it's even sliding me over for no reason I don't know why it does this to me but I think I mentioned this last week where. We got that initial pop through to the new high, and then we had that sort of little, quick little touchback right there that you often get. So that's a common thing. And then the second one is really right that follows. If we get one, uh, that is all is also not very uncommon, right? Usually that's something that happens. And then you have to see how it behaves there. And if it holds there, you know, I think that's going to be taken as a good sign. The only problem is the October seasonality is no joke. So we can't forget about that. The first half of October is also not a joke. So they might have gotten away with it. Can they get away with it for the entire month of October? Of course, we don't know. Uh, I think they probably won't, but you never know. You never know. Anyway, um, the XAU we talked about before. I'm not going to go into the tremendous big picture potential there. We talked about it plenty of times. I think it just became toasty. So that's the only reason really to cover it right now really quickly. I'll just pull up something like GLD. And we did have some bearish paper. We've had bull a bullish idea in there for on a lot of those things for some time. A couple bull bearish things happened. I had a problem with my software and tried rolling down something, which I'll talk about. And then they uh, they wouldn't let me and I, had, I couldn't get my prices. So I just said the hell with it. But that's what happens when you're busy and you, you try to do something Got to get back to idea generation and you can't even make the adjustment. But that was really a software problem. Did have a few put buyers come in today. I could see this thing also kind of pulling back a little bit and trying to just kind of cool off a little bit. You could see that really right yesterday you were at 75 on the RSI and GLD. So that's all I wanted to show on that one. I would just keep that in mind. I, you know, never know what could happen. I'm just for the record... Um, I'll, I'll get down to that actually, but that was what I wanted to talk about, with the slick initial pins to pull back. They pulled on the SPY. They did that last week. Now they might be heading for another one this upcoming week. That's more obvious or more glaring. Um, this became toasty. Like I said, in, in the metal space, uh, the reminder, the global, uh, easing is about to synchronize. Are we going to get yet another kick the can Ponzi cycle that works? Maybe. I mean, it's. People have said it'll never work in the long term. I wouldn't have believed that it would myself. It has so far. It's kind of scary, but um, you know, you got to you got to deal with what you got to deal with, you know, and we're, as traders. And so all we can really do is just again go with the flow and be smart about our position management. But I think they're going to try to prevent anything big from happening. Um, with the it'll be you know everything will to the rescue, including the kitchen sink. And you've got to realize that you know this is just what the incumbent administrations do. Uh, and I think that uh, it will take a major story, you know, to really upend that. And you could get one. Anyway, I think that the stuff we talked about in, in crypto last week, the precious, that's supposed to be precious metals names, PM names, uh, and the China names, they, those all benefited from, you know, it seems like the, the China stuff and all the other sort of uh, liquidity type stuff. Anyway, we talked about DXY. We talked about everything. The VIX held firm as we talked about. It's even up. So I did wait for better deals. I did get a few more things done. Uh, just to what note, um, I do have some diagonals in GDXJ. Those are the ones that I wanted to adjust, but they wouldn't let me in the very short time frame that I had a chance to do it in. So I just took a beating because the software was hesitating. 
Um, but again, like it's, a, I'm exaggerating when I say beating, but my plan, just so everyone knows if you like diagonals, like I do, I like to take, get diagonals on. And then, um, when the, when there's a little bit of a pullback, uh, I'll take off the short side, um, the, up, the, up, the upside in this case. And then when I see if I can catch a bounce, right, just long only, I'll ride that. When I feel like that bounce has gotten a little toasty, I'll reestablish the diagonal. So just, but that's what I like to do. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd share that because we don't talk about that stuff that much. Uh, these are all the things we've been rerunning for a while now. I still think a lot of people are just not going to see it coming. I'm more confident of that they won't see it coming if something does develop than I've been. And I've been pretty confident in saying that for a few months now because I see the bull chatter online. And when I see all the bros sort of backslapping each other um, and talking about how they've got it all nailed, you know, that usually scares me. And I see started to see that really kind of pick up the last couple of weeks, especially this week when new highs were made. Um, I would, you all know this one from now. I, I think you just, I'm sticking with the one I'm highlighting. These are all not worth re redoing. We talked about them several, for several weeks, right? We talked about my spidey sense, the long-term incoming uptrend. Um, I'm a little bit more, you know, I was a little bit more concerned than I was last week when I was more neutral opportunistic and just said, you know, sell the, sell the low buy the high. If they, if they start taking the momentum, just go with it in either direction. Cause I was not really as strongly opinionated. I mean, you're going to do that anyway, but I just feel better when we have a, when, when we have a little bit of a lean or more of a lean, it's always nice for it to go that way because in that way, it sort of makes better technical sense to you that that's happening, which is nice anyway this is the scenario i think you need to take a little bit of a breather here um maybe pull back to former resistance then we have to see if the risk appetite's still there right is is it like hey that's cool now i'm going to start buying all over again and they start moving things back up if that scenario does develop right where there's that retest of former resistance or right do they not and i think that would be the october effect uh it would be the you know this year and, you know, the the fact that the first half of October is typically not good and the fact that we are due for a pullback. So that all kind of lines up. But remember, this market did sort of beat the odds in the past two weeks. There was really a push higher where their calendar said probably doesn't happen, probably struggles and then goes lower. So it doesn't mean it has to happen. Again, still sticking with major news required to derail this market because that's the uptrend. And I still see really very few people willing to stick around as sellers aggressively for very long. But I do think there was a little distribution. The no news reminder is if we are becoming derailed and we don't know why, you can't figure it out. There's no news. That's worse, usually. So, uh, or it's a real rumor that rattled the market that may not be true. But one way or the other, you got to ultimately you find out what was causing that. But it could be worse uh, if you see that. I still think it's going to be volatile. It's been volatile in a way where it's been a lot of up and down during the days. It hasn't just sat still for all that long, but it has been in a more narrow range than I was expecting. Um, I thought the range would be a little bit more expansive, but it really hasn't been. So maybe we're getting to that. We'll see. Um, I think you have to, you can't rule out that at this point with all those sectors being overbought, the recent leaders, they're so close to overbought, they may as well call them that. I think that that's when you have a situation where you could get that melt up. So again, absence of news, they could just go with the squeezy melt. That would really be getting those hedge fund uh, sellers, again, really, really in trouble if they haven't covered in the past couple of weeks, or at least this week for sure. You could also get the rug pull, right? Where, like I said, a lot of these bros are thinking that they've got the stock market beat, as uh, Judge Mails noted when he was about to christen his yacht. Um, they might have the stock market beat for now, but the stock market's not something that takes kindly, typically, to people uh, dancing on its grave, thinking they've got it all figured out. So we shall see on that one. Um, window of time is upon us. I've said that. I still think that's going to happen. I just That's my sense from all the reading that I do. Um, I still think these risks are underappreciated. I still think the whole soft landing, they only talk about landings when things are sketchy. Now, that was a good point made by a guy named Dave Collum online. Like you don't really, uh, 
you don't really hear about landings when, you know, they're, the, the things aren't really worrisome. Um, so it's interesting, right? That's sort of telling the kind of like belies their, their front, right? They're trying to put on this front that everything's great, but they're also saying like, we're, we're hoping that it looks like we're going to have a soft landing or we're trying to bring about a soft landing. Well, you know, what's got you worried that it won't be, you know, like, you know, why are you even mentioning that? I would still stick at DEF CON 1. This, I know this has been overkill, but I think uh, you just don't know when the news can come out. I just think the news now to me is more like, since it, nothing has come out that's dramatic so far, um, if you want to, if you want to go that far just to say that, I think more news, you know, it come, it comes out sooner than later because we've advanced by a month. We're practically through September. So I think the intensity or the window could be really intense in the next month leading up to the election. Um, you all know the rest of that. And then, yeah, I'm just going to say that I think they're trying to work on this really strong Q3 print. They can sort of rush out the door. Every administration does it. I think what's most egregious, though, this time around is the amount of treasury sort of uh, prestidigitation that's been happening. They're really going uh, full tilt with uh, liquidity, you know, because that's really become the name of the game. And um, that is, art I think, artificially making things look better. I hope to be dead wrong. I hope that, you know, they were doing this and it all works out for every everyone on Main Street America. You know, I'm just really concerned that, you know, it's become the the every it seems like with each succeeding administration, without any exceptions, we just continue to get more uh, fast and loose with everything. And, um, you know, normally that's uh, not something that you can get away with uh, very much in your in your real life that most of us live. Right. You can't play fast and loose with everything and just pretend your way to prosperity um, but the way they've got everything sort of rigged up in this modern system, it's been working for a lot of people at the top, but unfortunately it's also been hurting a lot of people that are not at the top. And, uh, that to me is, uh, that has a limited shelf life. Uh, at some point that's going to turn into a disaster in, in some, in some way. So hopefully it doesn't, we don't get to that. Hopefully somehow. Uh, there's some sort of a renaissance of uh, common sense, but you know, there's been 500 years and might have to wait another 500 for all we know. But anyway, that's where I'm at uh, for this week. I think when you look at these charts, there really isn't anything horrible to say about them. I think you're more in the uh, camp of just, you know, I would prefer to be a bull long term, but I think your short term, you've got to probably see a little bit of a pullback, see how it acts. And then go from there. So you're really in more of a, a wait and see how the market behaves mode. Um, not that you can't trade on Monday morning. I mean, I certainly would was, if I see the momentum developing. It's just that uh, there's nothing really great about uh, these charts at the moment that I could say there's an instant, hey, there's an instant uh, opportunity here. I think you you have to wait and see. They, you know, they, could be, they could be able to run things. You know, if they get things back up, I mean, I'd certainly keep going with it. But again, I've said it many times, I would be a roller, roller, roller. But for now, um, like I said, I'm leaning, definitely leaning towards a little bit more of a pause or pullback. And then we see how we behave from that point on. So kind of a boring conclusion. I'm sorry. But again, you got to call it like you see it. If you don't hold above that former resistance that now should theoretically be support, then you just start looking in with ever respective index for at your flat lines, your support lines that I like to draw, like this purple one that's now blue, and then your SMAs that you all know that I run on, especially for these videos. So that's pretty much it. That's the wrap, I think. I'm just going to thank everyone again for tuning in. I want to wish everyone, I hope everyone had a pretty good week with some of the names we were able to cover last week. Um, I hope everyone has a great and safe weekend and a really good week ahead. And just, again, I would just stay nimble, stay nimble, stay disciplined, um, and, you know, the better times usually return once we get past the election. So uh, that's normally the case. It takes a little bit of a little while to sort out, but usually last six months and you get into better, you know, better trading uh, opportunities. It's even though recently it hasn't been too shabby. So on that note, thanks again, everyone. Take care.